The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. We're back, and uh, I want to do a bunch of questions came up, and this is the Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here on this 25th day of April, and we're looking at the Dow down 118, S&P is up three. This divergence I'll explain in a moment. Let me just show you the two-minute chart of the E-mini and the five-minute from the low that was made this morning at about 10.30, around about the 29, 14-ish, 13-ish area, uh, this is what we're looking at. We've had a really strong spike to the upside all the way to the 29.34 area. And now we're pulling back to 9.32. Made a peak E in the Chapman Wave 2-minute chart. Uh, this is a B, but it's a gray B in the, uh, in the daily chart. We're going to be watching this closely because if it holds steadily and it makes a push above... Uh, 29.37, that's going to start leg C. That'll be very positive. So what I am looking at is this V-shaped uh, chart at about 8.30 this morning. The S&P E-minis are trading about 29.35. Got a little news, uh, started to pull back, then started to rally, and then it failed. Then it failed, it went down sharply. Now we've got a V-shaped pattern, and we've got a left side, right side price time match that says by 12.35, if there is a spike, that's a spike that should take it sharply above the high of 29.35. But if there's a pullback underneath the 29.28 uh, area, underneath the 200-period moving average in this five-minute chart at 29.30, look out for lower prices. All right, enough with that. Now let's get on with the nitty-gritties of the real story. The dollar. The dollar is acting beautifully. It's at 98.17 right now. It's gone to that leg D. Look at the pattern we were looking at before. Got this cup. Not exactly a cup and handle formation, but it is a cup with a decent breakout to the upside. Finally, we've hit the 98. So we've been waiting for that for I don't know how long. But in the Chapman Wave methodology, this is a cup and ladle breakout pattern. So we had a little mini one right there, cup and, chap cup and handle uh, breakout. Goes to at least a D. And in this case, we've gone to a leg D. Now we're going to see if there's continuing strength because the MACD has turned up in the weekly chart finally after breaking down back in late December. It's taken its time getting back, even though the price has been quite good in the in the dollar. Hey, look at this. 82% in the stochastic. That now says that's a sign of some kind of stability. How long it lasts, we don't know. But it's leg C finally, a very strong leg C, even if it doesn't close here, the actual fact that it took out the 97.71 level and went to a high of 98.32 is really important in the monthly chart, technically, and the MACD and stochastic are very good. That takes us to the gold. The gold is really struggling here. It's trying its best to, to, to have another big bounce. But you see that trend line that I spoke about uh, for all of this week? I've said this is a trend line that needs to hold. See, that goes from the 1167.10 level in the continuous contract. Let me see if that's the same number because it does get smoothed out and it changes. So the low is 1186.2. Uh, okay, so it gets smoothed out. Whatever the low was on the eighth, on the 17th, the week of the 17th of August, <clears throat> fabulous run up to a leg E in the left side, right side price time match in the uh, weekly chart. Then it starts pulling back and it's been under both the the 9 and the 14 period moving average, having failed to hold above the 200 period of 1. Uh, 1,315. Um, it's, it's testing. It tested earlier in the week at 1268 level. I'm looking at this and saying by Friday, if there is a close underneath the low of 1267.9 that was made this week, that's going to be a big negative for, the, for gold. But so far, it's attempting a bounce. I think the dollar is still a little too strong, but it isn't leg D. This is where you could start a leg F to the downside in the gold daily, a leg D to the upside. We'll see what happens here. Let's look at the silver. Silver contract has been doing its own thing lately. Uh, it's not as good as uh, the, the gold three-day chart looks better than the three-day chart of silver. Silver is down 0.06 at 14.91. Not so great. I just wanted to quickly do this one. I'm at it. Um, have we seen a turn up in uh, wheat? No, just wheat is still down a quarter of a point at 432. Have we seen it in soybeans? 
Uh, soybeans trading at it's up two and a quarter at 8.57. Yeah, it's a start, an attempt to start a move to the upside because I'm following these grains real closely. We do have an ETF. It's underwater. It's a first experiment in, in trying to trade grains. Um, and we've taken a small position and it is down uh, a little bit. And now we're looking at corn down three quarters at 3.46. This is a really important candle. You want this candle to see up moves all of next week. That means maybe the dollar will be pulling back. We'll see. Okay. Meantime, back at the ranch. Let's get back to this. I want you to look at the EUR USD because that's the currency of importance. It made a lower low today. Oh, that the weekly, actually the daily, weekly, monthly charts look absolutely terrible. And the stochastic isn't low enough yet to say that I think we're making some kind of a bottom yet. Yeah, we are starting to attempt a bottom, but I don't think it's made it yet. Watch that one, one, one area. Just got to hold that over the next couple of days. Um, if it can bounce, it has to bounce all the way to the 127 area, 1.127, I should have said, before I even get any confidence at all in a sustainable rally. And the, oh, look at this. This is the uh, yen, the USD JPY currency pair, dollar currency pair. And it's just made a leg D with a very sharp move to the downside at 111.59, made a new recovery high leg D in the daily at 112.405 and a leg D in the weekly. So watching this closely, because the, the monthly chart is, is repairing a lot of damage. It's not great. It's just a repairing damage. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about a bunch of things that I think are important. I'll just first do the TLT. Now you can look at the TLT down 28 cents. If the TLT actually starts to rally, this is the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund, starts to trade in the 124.80 to 125.20 area. As the market is pulling back, I don't want this divergence of the S&P up and the NASDAQ up and the Dow down sharply. I want to see them all in, in concert in the same direction. In this particular case, down, that would say that bond money's coming to bonds as money comes out of stocks. Not yet. Okay, I think I've covered a chunk of stuff that I want you to do. Okay, so here are, here are the things that I want to look at. Semiconductor. So uh, we have no position now at this particular point in the semiconductor index, although I was just so tempted to go back to the short side. 120.71 was the high yesterday. I'm going to type that in because I think that might stay for a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe for a day. 120.71, only a leg C in the weekly chart, and I'm not sure what the monthly chart is, but it's a huge breakout to the upside. Now let me show you something. I showed subscribers this. I was sent this yesterday or day before, and I thought it's really interesting. North, this is from one of the newspapers, North American Semiconductor Equipment Industry posts March 2009 billings. I mean, this is billings. So uh, North American-based manufacturers of semiconductor equipment posted $1.83 billion in billings worldwide, worldwide in March of 2019, three-month average basis. According to the March Equipment Market Data Subscription EMDS billings report published today by SEMI. The billings figure is 1.9% lower than the final February 2019 level of 1.87 billion and is 24.6% lower than the March 2018 billings level of 2.43 billion. So in other words, look at this chart right here. What it's saying is September of last year, 1.2 euro over year, October 0.5. November minus 5.3, December minus 12, January minus 20, February minus 22, March expected minus 24. I'll be back. We'll talk about that. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Tech Business Hour. We're back. And uh, what I was doing is I was showing you, telling you about the uh, minus 20% and minus uh, in the North American Semiconductor Index. This is the equipment industry posting of the billings in February was minus 22.7, and the preliminary March is minus 24.6%. Now, I, I really am a believer in the technicals very often have a, an inclination to uh, predict technically better than fundamentally when it comes to major turns. And if you're looking at this chart of the SMHs, you'll see that from the low of, first of all, the March high of last year, 114.55, plummets down to the 80.71 area, and then has a rally in the shortest period of time to all-time highs. And I was anticipating that we would get a rally, but I expected that somewhere around the, from 80, I thought 97, maybe 101, 102, that would be it. I didn't even think that. I thought maybe 96. We'd have some kind of a pullback. And then we'd slowly start to see the fundamentals with it, the billing start to improve. This is saying that there's a big discrepancy because if you're looking out six months, which is what sometimes what the market looks out for, all time highs would say that there is going to be an absolute record amount of billings coming up going into the year end and, and certainly for the next, uh, the first few months of, Jan of January, February, March of next year. Um, I, that, that, that's a that's a tall order. So I think there's going to be some regression to the mean here. Maybe we start to see some digestive phase in the uh, semiconductors over the coming six weeks to maybe two months. I, I don't know. This is just what I'm thinking out loud here because it is extremely unusual to have this kind of a disparity. Look, talking about December, right, was the low. Now you've got January, February, March. April, we're almost done with April, that's four months, but you haven't had a pickup. In fact, you've had an increase in the decrease. So in the in the decline, that is. So I, something's wrong with this picture. All right, so I'm looking at this askance, and I think that when the semiconductors and the XLK, which is probably at a record high today, uh, it did make a record high, 79.24 was yesterday, 79.46 is today, still leg D, going right into the resistance. <clears throat> The resistance zone right there. <clears throat> that's, that's the Chapman wave technique of 
identifying highs and then drawing a very narrow channel. It's got nothing to do with an up channel. It is a mini up channel. Nothing to do with the bigger picture. This is just to say that's the that's the area where there should be a repellent, uh, where the, the price hits a lot of resistance and pulls back. So that's the XLK, the S&P, so they take spider fund. Okay, so I'm just trying to put a picture together here to say, hmm, very unusual. Very unusual in the Dow to have um, some real big winners like this, but some big losers. Let's see what Boeing's doing today. Question about Boeing, our usual question about Boeing. Yeah, it's up about two at 377.40, and I just think that they stuck for now. Let's look at the XAL. Let's see what the actual airline index is doing. The ARCA airline, look at that. Made that oval pattern. Still stuck really in there. I'm going to keep this as an oval pattern. That's a B minus. I'm sorry, a B right there. And now we've had a little mini A to B right here. Look, a little mini A to B. Okay. And I'm going to extend that. So what we're really looking at is uh, stuck in a trading range in the lower range of the monthly chart, which had a higher all time high of the 124s, plummets down to the 86 area. Um, good 20% rally, not bad, well, less than that, 18%, and now it's sort of stalling, but holding okay. So that's going to be very important. Let's look at the IYT, if you're looking at this, um, down 2.5 at 196.73, made a new recovery high, not an all-time high, 209.44 was the all-time September high, 2018, plummets to 179.55, oops, uh, 155, and now it's running quite nicely. We are still long our position here. Um, I like this. I think this is holding very nicely. And that magnet line right there, 199, let's see if that can hold well. It did test the 14-period moving average since it broke out above it way back on the 28th of March. We're looking at a daily chart. Uh, a close below 194 would be a negative and say, you know what? It's coming. It's, it's going to be pulling back. Um, question about XLE. The XLE is the, there we go, XLE is the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund. Made a leg E and then a peak E in the daily chart for a bit of a pullback. A bit of a pullback. I might have to put a down arrow at the end of the day. At this point, we'll just put a red plus sign. And that's a leg F. This is one of the quickest, not the, I've seen quicker than this, but this is definitely one of the quickest. Peak A, rest. Peak B, one, one bar rest. Goes to leg C. Then it goes to uh, a three week consolidation. And it goes to a leg D. One week consolidation goes to a leg E. One week consolidation, now it's gone to a leg F. This could have recycled, but at this, at this point, I'm just calling it right now, uh, very quick, big A to B to C to C to E, and now we're going to leg F. Is this F slash B? At this particular point, I didn't make any changes. We, didn't have a, we don't have a position. It's above the 9, the 14 period moving averages. The MACD is good, stochastic is pulling back, still at 90%, very good. On balance volumes pull back. Let it just play out for another couple of days. Uh, I like crude oil here because even though crude oil, there it is, even though crude oil has pulled back just a little bit in the last two days, it's at a higher level consolidation. The 200 period moving average in the weekly chart at 65.01. That's a magnet. I think, in fact, I'm going to draw this. Draw this. I'm not going to draw it as an oval. I'm going to draw it as a rectangle to say I would not be surprised if this is a trading band for a little while. Uh, just stuck between the 66s, maybe even 67 on the high side and 61 to 60 on the low side. Okay, so uh, that's that. Now, we have some interesting things. Look, Microsoft, and if I updated this, Microsoft leg D today in the weekly chart, a whopper of a move in the upside, F slash B in the monthly chart. This is very good action. And a gap up, if this was a Friday, I'd say, uh-oh, but it's a Thursday, so we have to wait for tomorrow. Um, a gap up with a little doji candle leg D and the all-time high, yep, all high of 131.37. I'm going to type that in just so I've got it as a reference point. 131.37. That's today, so I'll make it a very light color so it doesn't get in the way of my analysis. Yeah, I think that at some point Microsoft will be filling in and be going to the 122 to the 119 area. But in the meantime, this is outstanding action. I think it's the market should be getting a little tired. Look how extended this is. But fabulous earnings and everything. Uh, I don't see any reason why um, it shouldn't hold very well on pullbacks. And that was Microsoft. What was the other one that I was thinking of? Uh, I just wanted to see what Disney's doing. I wanted to show you a particular pattern right now. 
Disney is in a very strong leg D. That's also helping the, the Dow. It's up 295, 138.05, or another 130s. Um, you tell me, is Disney an industrial? Nah, of course it's not an industrial. It's entertainment, that's more cyclical. Uh, look at that major breakout in the monthly chart. So we were looking at the Dow, and I've said before, I think the Dow's got a really interesting makeup. It's the first time that I actually look at it, and I'll look at it as I used to years ago, look at the XMI. The XMI was a real mix. It, uh, it still has a Mo, I think it is, Philip Morris. But the XMI, uh, the Dow is taking that place because it's really an ideal 30 conglomerate. I think there's one too many financials, maybe even two. I think they should have put in some one of the brokers instead of, um, say, American Express. But uh, I think it's got a good mix to tell us what the markets really do. I'll be back in a moment. The Dow is down 114 Basil Chapman Tiger Technicians. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just to refresh for some of you who are maybe new to my uh, uh, methodology, try to identify the lowest, lowest bar, and you count each successively higher peak uh, alphabetically in sequence all the way to a G, but it's at the fourth highest peak, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, is where other things can happen. Happens often enough for us to make a big deal about that, that peak B, D because that's where you could recycle higher. Now, the other thing that's really important is within the context of uh, this particular pattern, I'm only looking for arches and cups. They could be V-shaped formations, but it's basically the same thing. Going from one level up back to that and test it, or one level down and then back to that level, test it, and you can get a pattern that I call the lowercase h that 
If you take out the left side low, it's very negative. You, on the right side, it's the upside down H or the Y inverted Y. If you take out the right side or the left side high on the right side, that means a bunch of other things. So let me get back to our story here. You'll see here's a PD in RS Reliance Steel. It made a high today. Of, uh, sorry, it made a earnings announced must have been good. It's up at 195. It had a high today of 92.41, straightening down uh, uh, from that high, but still up at $1.95. But look at this, the monthly chart. Uh, it's just been in this choppy sideways, big sideways pattern between 68s and 96s. And now it's trading at 90.77. Uh, 90 Trying to hold that the SLX, which is the ETF for the steel sector, Van Eck Vector Steel ETF, made a peak D. There it is another. How many Ds did we get here? Look at this D at 42.28 on the 8th of April. Now it's down at uh, the 38.85 level. Uh, it's, it's difficult in the steels. Now, let me just go back to this. I was saying uh, Microsoft had done very nicely. Microsoft went to a leg D. Uh, what was the other one that I was looking at a moment ago? Good grief. Have I already moved on? Um, oh, uh, Disney we looked at. Disney is in a leg D. We're looking at, I was just, I thought I'd just gotten the, uh, there it is. Okay. I wanted to see what was working in the Dow. So let's go to this. Is that up in the cabinet? Hi, cap. Cap scan. Yeah, we go. So Microsoft is up four. Disney is up over two. American Express is actually up. Let's see what AXP is doing. Someone's telling me, uh, I heard the other day, talking about American Express being vulnerable to a huge decline. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, no, it's just making a jump wave cup formation. Here we go. Peak D was the last move of, of significance in the 114s, slumps to 108. And now, uh, oops, that's a C right there. So this is how easy it is. You go to a D. There it is. So D in an up move for the gap. We'll be watching it tomorrow. Only a leg C for American Express in the weekly chart. Monthly chart broke out. This is going to be very interesting because American Express is helping the Dow. It's in the Dow now, but not enough. So um, this is a leg D. We're watching it. The MACD is good. Stochastic's okay at 87%. Hmm, all the technicals are pretty good. Uh, what else have we got there? Merck. Oh, Merck actually came alive today. Merck made a peak E in the month. Oh, there's your peak D in the daily. Peak D, kaplop. And it goes from the 83s down to the 72s in one foul swoop. And now it's trying to rally up. It's up $1.23. Only a leg B in the monthly chart. That's going to be very interesting. All right, so I thought I'd go through a couple of those things. Most important, let me just get out of this because that'll mess me up a little bit. There you are. Okay. A couple of things I wanted to look for, um, and that is to show you that within the context of all those earnings reports yesterday, did I write them down? Yes, I did. So look at this. So Xilinx, which came out with earnings three months or over three months ago and just knocked that out of the park. They said they're handling all the expenses and everything, had a spectacular move. And it runs, it becomes one of the best stocks, let alone best semiconductors, but one of the best stocks over the last eight months or so. And Xilinx goes from the 60, 65-ish uh, area back a year ago in June, July, and it screams to a high of 140. What was that high just yesterday? The high was 141.60. So it goes from 141.60, has a little problem, comes out with earnings and says, oh, oops, um, maybe I should have read that uh, semiconductor equipment industry North American uh, Billings uh, 2000 March 2007 uh, report because uh, it's not so good. Um, and it, it drops a little bit. It drops $23 to $116.74 right now. Uh, this is not good action. Leg F in the daily, leg E in the weekly chart in the chat wave, and a possible leg F in the monthly for the semis. I have to tell you, something's wrong with this picture. Wait a minute, something's wrong with this picture? Um, Lamb Research which said the same thing on the same day of the earnings report last year, I mean, three months ago, and then came out and blasted that, just shot up like a rocket ship, comes out yesterday and says, everything's looking great. It's up. It was up 10. Now it's up 12 and a half at 208.21. All-time highs at 20, uh, 237, I think. Let me just double check. 234.88. Let me just type that in. So 234.88. That's a spectacular move from the low 
in the 165 area in December. No, no, no. What am I talking about? In the from the low, it goes from 234. I would say a decline to 122.80. I would say that that is definitely a serious decline. Um, so what's happened is it's run up to 208. That's a, uh, I mean, that's an 80, 86 dollar rise. That, yeah, that is 60 something percent. That is huge. So, and it comes out with earnings and it says things are great. I don't know how to explain all this. Maybe it's a different chips and different things, different chips for different folks, or whatever the expression would be. Uh, maybe that's what it is. What's applied materials doing? It goes with LAM research. Today, applied is up 63 cents at leg F, kind of struggling leg D in the weekly chart, not as good a chart at all. Applied materials. I'm going to be watching these semiconductors really closely. All right. So um, next question I had was, would I look at, ooh, it disappeared. Oh, the XLF, sure. The XLF, which is the S&P Select Financials, leg D to the upside. Very nice. I like this. Uh, going against the market grain right now, it's kind of independence of 12 cents at 27.52. XLF is the S&P Select Financials. Legs seen the weekly, but it's got a long way to go for that monthly to break into the 28.70, 29.30 area to break this down, long-term downtrend line. I think it's going to do it. When it does, it's going to be very important. As I say, we are still we are long a financials done very nicely for us. And today it's up 0.92%. That's very good when the general market is only up 0.05 for the S&P and down 0.50 for the 0.50%, uh, 0.5% um, in, the, in, the, in the Dow. So that's that. I've covered those things I wanted to get. There were three areas I wanted to get to today. Um, oh, that's right. IBB. The IBB has really languished. Uh, in nine, in nine, NASDAQ Biotech ETF trading at 106.16, up 52 cents today. Look at that. Makes an all-time high right there. And that was in October, I think. Yeah, October goes to 122.97. I don't know if I ever typed that in. I'll type it in now. It's just been off our list for a long time. 97, and that was 10, 2018. It drops very sharply to the 89 area, and now it's trading at uh, 106. I just think it's stuck. I don't think it's the turn for the I, for the uh, biotechs right now. They've had a spectacular year or two. This needs a bit of a breather, and I think that breather's going to last maybe another couple of months. And then I wouldn't be surprised if the pharmaceuticals and the biotechs really get a test because of the political debates going on. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So I was talking about O'Reilly Automotive, Orly, O R L Y is the symbol. At 379 right now, made a high of 440.63, all-time high in a peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology on the 16th of April. It's trading right now. It had a low today of 367. It's trading at 379. Gaps down huge. Obviously, earnings disappointment. The peak day, I should have done this. I, I completely forgot about all the earnings. We've done this once before. Was it all? I believe it was all the or AZO. Uh, auto zone. One of those, we had them on the day of uh, the earnings disappointment, and it was like an 80 point uh, move to the downside. So, really, I just it wasn't on my radar right now. Pity about that. Leg F, I don't know if this is an alternate count, but this is going to be very important. What happens to the auto industry in terms of the rotation? Everything here is about rotation. Look, we just saw Xilinx, huge market up move, and then today, bam, huge move down. All of a sudden, Lamb Research is leading there. Um, these kind of mixed within a sector, it's going to be very important to watch AZO. I know when the earnings come out for AZO, but it's trading right now. Also had a spectacular move. Leg C only, oh, A, B, yep, C in the monthly chart, uh, trading at down 9 at 1,033. Made a doji, perfect doji candle high on the 15th of April at 1,074.67. That would be A, B, C, B, C. Uh, let me just do this here. Treat this as an A, a B. I'm just calling this a C for now in the weekly chart, a recycled C. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, this is going to be very important in this sector because if you look at Ford, look, Ford is down just 12 cents. It's had a really nice move, made a peak F. I could even consider this an oval pattern here. We'll see what happens. But holding this well, in the automotive section, let's see what GM's doing. GM is down 50 cents uh, after making its peak D in the daily chart, but well off the lows and the 36 area that was made uh, late March. So that's good. It went to the 40, uh, what did it do? It went to uh, 40 area, and now it's at 39.23. So far, not bad. What happened to Siri? Speaking about it yesterday, Siri is down one cent today at 55.71. Yeah, I mentioned that I think their business plan is not so good. I think that the offerings are not bad. I, I would like it a lot easier. I'd like to just be able to say, get me uh, Schubert Impromptus or something like that, or uh, Ornette Coleman, Shape of Jazz to Come, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, so that's not quite easy to really be done there. But in the meantime, it's trading way off the high that was made in 2018, back in January, uh, sorry, June of six. No, it went to 770, announced at 571, 20, uh, two points lower. All right, next thing I want to look at is within the list of what's coming up, where did that go? Uh, the list, the list, the list. Uh, let me just click on this and see if I can get it. Uh, no, it's not that, it's not that. Oh, my, I had the list and now it's just gone. Of earnings, 
Is that right? Nope, it's not. Oh, I just lost it. Sorry about that. I thought I'd be able to go through some of those. Oh, there it is. So um, I, I just want to briefly talk about Tesla. Tesla, I said yesterday, is um, a stock that I, I just can't trust anything there. I just don't think it's the there there is not there. It's down eight at 20, 2.49. I, I remember hearing Dave White talk about this, and he was talking about it on a pretty technical level. He had done a lot of work, and I, I believe that he, he was very negative, the stock. And look at this. It's about to, and I was looking at it, and I said, you know, I, as a trade, it's very difficult. As an auto company, I just think it's doing terribly. I see them all over the show. It just, I drive around here. I, every day I could count three to five just in the little area that I'd be traveling in. Um, but that's a little unusual. I, I think I think that's not the whole country. That's just around here. And, uh, you know, we've got a big biotech sector. We've got a lot of entrepreneurs. We've got a lot of uh, the whole 128 belt uh, is, is tech related. There are a lot of very people that really want to show their wealth. But there are also a lot of people that want to get this kind of car. They like it very much. I know people, anyone who's I, I've spoken to who's, who's driven one or has one, just loves it. Oh, they prepare to put up with all the other stuff that they have to put it up. So that's a separate animal altogether. My suspicion has been that it costs them a lot of money for every car that they sell. It's just as simple as that. They're really not making a big bunch of money. They're losing a big bunch of money, and they aren't being able to, to regenerate that cash. That's cash flow is absolutely imperative. And that's, I think, what we're looking at now. What I want to show you is look at this uptrend line. We're testing it right now. The month is not finished. We've still got a week to go or so. Uh, whatever we've got. I never, I never keep counting this. So what is this? This is April. April goes to the 30th of Tuesday. Are we still in April? Yeah, April 30th, Tuesday. So now look at this. You're right on that line. And the MACD is very weak. Stochastic is very weak. And what I've been saying is that I just don't know how they're going to do it. Do they become a battery company? What, what, what's, what the heck's going on? Because as an automobile company, the costs are just too great. I think that's really the issue. Hey, maybe I'm wrong because you've got to really know the inside out of this company. But technically, I see nothing here. But I do see some chance that in the 240 to 236 area, there'll be a, an attempt to try to rally. But this is not a good sign for Tesla. TSLA trading at 249 down eight. Um, I want you to look at Facebook. Facebook gaps up today in leg G slash C in the daily, leg D in the, in the weekly chart, and only a gray leg A in the monthly, because the monthly technicals have not improved uh, enough to call it a, a new buy mode. I suspect it's going to be, but just for now, Facebook trading at 193.25 up 10.65. Now, this gap, from the way it did that, leading into it, my suspicion is that over the next week, we'll get some kind of a test of the 190 level, just in between 191, it's a 193 right now, between 191 and 188. If it holds that, it could have another bit of a, a rally. But most importantly, if it takes out, if it closes under 187.50, I think that it's going to give quite a bit back. And that will be just a very, let's put it this way, Earnings and a bunch of stuff was fantastic, as it often is with Facebook. But the pressure, outside pressure, might be saying, you know what? Uh, it's gotten a little ahead of itself. And that's really the issue. If you're looking to buy it, hey, give me a yell when it gets to between 180, uh, 181 and 175. We'll have a good look at it then, it's if, it's, if it's going to have another big move to the upside. All right, we've got that out the way. I want to, oh, Texas Instruments, that was the other one. So Texas Instruments comes out. It's down 135 right now at 117. You made a high yesterday, a recovery high, not an all-time high of 119.32. I'd like to type that in here. That's a leg E, 119.32. Let me just put that in, 119. 0.32. I'll just keep note of that. Make it nice and light, so that it is there. Oh, just in the background. This is leg D again. Another D in the weekly chart. I think we're getting real close to some kind of digestive phase. The big thing is this. Look, the S and P came within. Look, the spy. The spy makes a high yesterday, of uh, two days ago. No, it was yesterday. 293.16. 
at 293.16, 293.16, look at this. It's, 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 it's 30, 30, 35 cents away, 45 cents, 35 cents away from an all-time high. I mean, come on, that's amazing. So the Dow should get there at some point soon, but I think it needs a rest first. I'll be back, Ross segment coming up. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So, WHI, RHI, Robert Half International Jobs, this is really an important uh, measure of, of certain aspects of the economy. Made a peak D just the other day, uh, two days, three days ago, at 69.08. Its all time high was around about 80. It dropped to the 54 area. It had a really good comeback. It went to the 80, uh, sorry, to the 69.08 level on the 23rd. Uh, gaps down yesterday and inside bar today. This is not a good sign. I want to see more, more, more upside action here than Robert Half. So just before we're going to wrap up, so this is the, the last segment. I will be back with Tom for an interview at 4.20 this afternoon. Let me just say two things. One is that this is a... Absolutely a, a fantastic example of a bifurcated market. As a split personality, we saw that in Xilinx, we saw that in land research. And that's all around. We're looking at Microsoft on the upside, Caterpillar on the downside, uh, Triple M on the downside. UTX is actually holding pretty nicely here. So, um, yeah, there it is, up 16 cents at 139.75 off its all time high of 144, but it's important. So keep this in mind. This is a market where there are specificity that says earnings announcements are very important. What happens in between is important. So if there's a sharp pullback on a particular stock that you love, 
then I think that the essence is to say, have a little patience. This is, a, I think, a period of patience right now. There are going to be stocks that you've missed on the upside. They will have some kind of a pullback, and those are the ones, if you want, just put in a bit at a low price at exactly what you think is reasonable, that you're comfortable with. That's the way to play it right now. Meantime, I, as, as traders, you can do some shorting. We are actually short the Dow. Let's see how that works out so far. It's not bad, but we'll see what happens. But very spe specificity is really important right now. And you can see that by the examples I just showed you of a triple M and a UTX, which usually kind of go together, not now. So this is a very important phase. Another thing I'm looking at here is the VIX index. Uh, in, the, in the single, in the 12s, it's really, that says there's buying pressure. Well, today it hit 14.30. Right now it's trading at 13.03, almost back to the 12s. So keep that in mind because that's the bigger part of the picture in the market. So the VIX index, only when it gets to the 15s and 16s and actually closes at the high of the day, that's when this market is going to be impacted very negatively. In the meantime, very selective. That's what we're trying to do. Longs and one short but we'll see what happens. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve. Stay tuned for Dave and Tom O'Brien. I'll be back a little later.